Yep, it's recording. Hi, everybody. My name's Andy Kravlich, and this is Q&A number seven. Now, this is the seventh video in the Q&A series. If you want to catch up on the rest of them, please click the link and the card right up here. We haven't done one of these for a while, but thanks to you guys sending in questions at askandykravlich at gmail.com, it's time to go answering again. Here we go. Barbara asks, have you got any tattoos lurking beneath your clothes? No, not a one. Kachoro asks, how many guitars do you have? Uh, depends on how you count. I have six, uh, three acoustics and three electrics, of which two are lovely Jacksons. Um, I also have a wife who owns a beautiful Greg Bennett acoustic guitar steel string. You may have seen it in some of the videos. So if you count that, it's seven. And if you count uh, this bass guitar right here, which is an Ibanez uh, six string, um, that's eight. So it depends on whether you count a bass guitar as a guitar and a wife's guitar as a guitar. Dennis asks, how do you write your songs? Guitars, piano first, or drums, or do you have the vision how everything should go from the start? I wish I had a vision of how everything should go from the start. It would save me so much time. Usually, I start with an embryo. I start with one riff or something which kind of uh, gets in my head and I want to record it, and I record it right away, usually on like a tip talk or something on my phone. And then I'll use uh, Cubase and, and my guitars and so on and make like a really high value production of that. Now, this is what's been in my mind lately. from there comes a feeling and that gives me a feeling and that feeling kind of gives me a memory of a movie or a song or uh, you know a game I've played or a novel I've read or, or some historical event and from there will grow a story and then everything else happens to serve the story it's like so what does the story need next and where's the story going and the lyrics kind of give me you know wh wh when is it going up when is it going down when is it gonna go quiet when is it gonna go loud it's all about the story Helio asks, have you considered composing songs for games? Your music fits nicely into epic RPG games. Helio, I definitely consider it, and if anyone out there is a game developer watching right now needing some help with your game, I would be more than happy to contribute my songwriting or song playing talents. Uh, I haven't so far written any music for games, but I have written uh, and performed some music for a movie. More on that soon. Oscar asks, I practice with a metronome and play the sequence crystal clean a lot of times until I'm comfortable and then increase the speed a little bit. But there are times when no matter how many times I play the sequence, I never feel 100% comfortable. And if I speed up, the sequence doesn't sound good. It, in these cases, when I get really frustrated to the point of that I sometimes consider dropping off playing guitar, I was wondering, what do you do if you ever find yourself in my situation? Well, I never find myself in your situation. I'm good at playing guitar. No, seriously, it is entirely normal to be in this place. It's entirely normal to have visions in your head that your your fingers can't translate into music. Sometimes I write, you know, solos or I'll, I'll, I'll have an idea for how a riff should go and I find I can't play it. You go back to, to, to a choice. Either you postpone that until your general skill level is developed to the point where you can actually play it. And I've had some songs which have sat, you know, in the treasure chest for, for years until I've picked them up later when I can actually play them. You're doing the right thing playing to a metronome and I think that it's a good way to develop skill. Uh, just please don't forget to have fun and don't beat yourself up about not being able to play something that comes up in your head. World-class guitarists are world-class guitarists because they're some of the few people who can take something that they hear in their mind and translate it to something on their fingers. And most of the time, they can't do it. That's why they're all such insecure bastards. Kenny asks, I want to bring power metal to this dull town in Texas, and I think my band can. Do you have any tips for a fellow metalhead? Kenny, man, that's, that's a whole nother video, man. I could give you tips and still not be able to help you in, in three weeks. So, 
you know, let's try it for the next 45 seconds. Um, these days, it's not about what you can play. It's not about the talent. Talent is just assumed. Everybody has it. Everybody writes good songs. Everybody has good production. Everybody has an XFX or, or you know, a great plugin. Everybody can have a great sound, great mixing. Everybody makes videos. Everybody has a YouTube channel. It's about pushing through the noise. And to push through the noise, you need to have something special. And to have something special, you need to kind of do something that nobody's done before. For labels to notice you and so on, you need to produce key figures. You need to produce followers. How many followers do you have on Instagram, Twitter, uh, YouTube? How many plays do you have? Uh, are you like a YouTube partner, which means you have a certain amount of plays and, and, and are able to monetize your videos? You know, get out on Twitch, do collaborations. Who has remixed you? Who have you remixed? Um, stuff, stuff like that are things that people are gonna ask and just make sure that you're in the public consciousness through other channels than the normal ones because the normal ones are just assumed these days. On a corollary note, Jake asks, I was wondering, when you were looking to get signed with a record company, what did you do? Did you make a demo CD and send it to a few companies? We want to try and get signed with a record company, but don't really know where to start. Now, Jake, that's another, uh, you know, a whole new video. And when I got started, I got my first album out in 2005. It was still a very analog process. I mean, we made a demo CD in a proper studio, sent it out to record labels, got an advance to, to record it in a proper studio and release that album, you know, in 2005. So that's a completely different world to how it is right now. These days, as I said in the previous question, you know, the talent side of it, the songwriting side of it is just assumed. Uh, the other month, a month ago, I released an album that was one of 40 releases that week in that tiny genre. So 40 releases in one week in one small subgenre of metal. The amount of noise is incredible. And that's just the ones that get released. Imagine the hundreds, thousands of bands that aren't getting released. Uh, so to poke through that noise floor, you have to have an insane amount of luck. And you have to have self-discipline and you need to produce key figures. That's what I said. So you guys need, you know, if you have 100,000 likes on Facebook, Record labels will sit up and notice if you if you write them. Uh, record labels will get in touch with you. But if you have 100 likes on Facebook, not so much. So make sure that you guys network and do your PR thing in your guerrilla channels, you know, Reddit and so on, Twitch. And then when you have that critical mass going and, and the label knows that if we sign you, there's going to be like sales for this record. The rest is going to be history, man. And Kenny, Jake, guys, do not give up. Whatever you do, whatever you do, do not give up. And if at any point you feel you're stuck, and if there's anything I can do, write me, and I will help you guys. Because the world needs good metal, not just little towns in Texas. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. It would mean the world to me if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, if you could click this subscribe button right here to look at some of the songs I've made. Click some of the cards that are in the corners right here. Thank you very much for sharing these minutes with me. My name is Andy Kravlicha. Let's hope for some more questions in Q&A Part 8. Just ask me at askandykravlicha at gmail.com. Cheers, guys. See you later.